Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Real with MoxieWorks podcast. My name is Maddie High, and I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at MoxieWorks. I'll be your host today. We're changing things up. And today we're going to be talking about career opportunities, paths for advancement, and paths to success for women in real estate. And I am honored to be joined by Jill Jacoby Wood, the co-president of Wintermere Real Estate, a very well-regarded leader in our industry. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you here. Well, and it's nice to be here in person here at the It's so HQ. nice to be here in person and it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been good. to the office yet and it is absolutely gorgeous. We're, we're excited to have you here. Thank you. Um, to kick us off today, I want you to just tell us a little bit about your journey and what led you to where you are today. Oh, my journey. Um, well, I was practically born into real estate. My dad bought a tiny real estate office in the early 70s, and there were six of us kids, and we all had to help wash the cars every Sunday for tours. We um, worked the front desk. Went, I sold real estate. I managed a real estate office, and then I became general manager of a five-company office, and then I came to work at Windermere Services Company, which is the franchise arm of Windermere. And um, thankfully, I get to work with my husband and my brother, and we all have really different strengths and weaknesses. Um, Sounds great. Yeah, and so I feel really fortunate at my journey in this business. It sounds like you started, you've had experience at every level. Every level. Of real estate. Yeah. So Windermere is one of the um, more well-respected, independent, uh, brokerages in the country, and I know you're leading our e-company, you're approaching your 50th anniversary, which is really exciting, congratulations. Thank you. What's on the horizon for Windermere? What do you all have underway? Oh, um, we are, we, we, we really went into more of a growth mode in the last couple of years. Um, we acquired Lion in Sacramento, for yeah. example, and we just, we love that company. It's so well respected. Um, we are looking to grow in the West, not not go nationwide. We're trying to just build up the areas where we already are, mm -hmm. but we really do it through relationships. So we are not growing for growth sake at all. It's it's finding the right people who want to be part of something bigger, um, and and growing through their communities where they work and live. Sticking to what you do well. Sticking to what we do well. Yeah, I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so we're going to be talking about opportunities and growth for women in real estate, okay. which is something I'm really passionate about, and I know you have hands-on experience with. Um, so since you've spent your whole career in this industry and now lead a brokerage, can you tell me a little bit about, in your opinion, you know, how has the landscape changed for women? Um, I think in the last, if you if you go back 20 years, probably even more like 30 years. I think men were owners of real estate companies mm -hmm. and they were in the senior management positions um, and women were selling real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, I think it's also the advent of, we need two household incomes in most of our communities to live. Um, and so women have figured out childcare for their families, for instance, and so, they are able now to take some of these um, managerial roles or mm -hmm. the executive roles uh, by companies. Um, and so it's just, it's become more opportunity for women, mm -hmm. I think because of that. Yeah, those dynamics are shifting. The dynamics are definitely shifting. There's more available. Yeah, I still don't think we're there. Yeah. 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 Well, real estate is really interesting because typically when we talk about women in the workplace, you know, we're talking about women being uh, the minority. But mm -hmm. in real estate, women are the majority amongst agents, mm -hmm. but they're significantly underrepresented at the top in leadership. I don't, don't so. tell anybody, but I think they're just better salespeople. So they're making more money. <laughs> they're making more money. They're making as more agents. money. Hey, and that's so then fair. to get into a management role, yeah. you typically have to take a pay cut if you're if you're good at this. Yeah. And it's not what everyone wants. It's right? not what I everyone think. wants. There's flexibility in being a broker, yeah. you make your own business plan. Yeah. And if you get into management, you're working for a lot of other people. Yeah. You're all of a sudden working for a lot of agents. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because when we think about paths to success, there's not just one path for advancement for everybody, right? And real estate's unique in that there are so many different paths. Right. Do you see those paths for women expanding and there's more opportunity based on 
a woman's skill set or oh roles? I I think I think men are starting to accept women in senior management roles mm -hmm. so if you work in title I think that there's more opportunity in title today than there was 20 years ago mm -hmm. in management if you work in mortgage there's more opportunity have you seen that personally I've seen it a lot that's incredible. I've seen it a lot. And beyond that, you know, not just within the brokerage, but in the services, like you were saying, even in prop tech, right? Mm -hmm. I work for MoxieWorks, a software company, but am in the real estate industry. Exactly. So there's, there's so much more opportunity for women to yeah. expand and grow because there's more paths. The other thing that we have at Windermere is that we are a family run company and most of our franchises back in the day came on and lots of them have passed on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of women. Yeah. leaders that have acquired their office from their family, bought it, and worked their whole life for it, um, that kind of thing. Jill, you mentioned that men are now seeing women in leadership roles more and that that's making a difference. How are you seeing that make a difference? Because, you know, there's that saying, um, you can't be what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And so I think it has an impact on how men see women, but also how younger women see a path to success for themselves. How have you seen that change? That's a really hard question for me because I, like I said earlier, I came from a family with six of us, five girls and one boy. And so my dad has always been very, very supportive of women. Before I took a leadership role at Windermere, he always surrounded himself with very smart women. And he is a very smart man. Yeah. Um, and I have had the support of my brother Obi and my husband Jeff mm -hmm. all these years and so I've never really felt it personally uh -huh. of oh, how am I going to do this because it's always just been the path has been there but I do see it I do see women executives on boards with the National Association of Realtors mm -hmm. I see them running real estate companies and it's 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 awesome yeah it sounds like you've had a really a lot of great support in your career and a lot of great role models. Mm -hmm. And I know role models can be incredibly powerful for women who are looking to, for, you know, personal and professional growth. Um, how have, is there someone in your life, male or female, who has been a significant role model for you that's really helped you get to where you are? Um, I don't think she knows it, but um, she was probably my dad's right hand person for um, many, many, many years. Um, she started the Windermere Foundation. Um, she's wonderful and I just from the time I was probably 15 years old I just looked up to, I just watched everything that she was doing and I don't think she even knows that I did that what did you learn from her I learned um, compassion I learned know that there are three sides to every story um, I learned that women can be around a board table and have a voice she was never afraid to share her thoughts or opinions, and, and the men in our company listened to her. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's just what it was everywhere. You know, I didn't know. Yeah. So um, I, I just feel super fortunate that I had that experience as a, as a woman in real estate. That's powerful. That became yeah. your norm. That became so my norm. Oh, knew. absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's my norm. That's incredible. Yeah. Across the board, we talk a lot about self-doubt when mm -hmm. we consider women and growth opportunities. Do you see that coming up? Is that something you face or you have faced? Well, I face it, but I just pretend that it's not there. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us face it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I think everybody just kind of goes, these are big decisions that you have to make. And it's just like, dang, I'm mm -hmm. making the right decision. But then I think about it and it's not that we're making life and death decisions. We're making decisions how to better our business, how to create a better environment for our people. Mm -hmm. um, and we just hope we're doing the right thing. Yeah, sometimes you have to ignore that little voice uh -huh. and just, yeah. go with your gut yeah. and make the decisions you feel are best. Yeah. And as long as you're moving forward, exactly. right? That's exactly. what's most important. Yeah. Would, is that a piece of advice you would give to women looking to grow their careers? Um, I would, my advice would be, it's kind of like that lean in. Mm -hmm. Tell people what you want. Raise tell your them, hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> tell people that they you would like know. to be. <laughs> tell people, it's like that thing of, one time I um, recruited an agent that used to be at Windermere mm -hmm. and she went to a different company and I called her and I said, why haven't you ever come back to Windermere? 
you loved it. You were awesome. And she goes, because nobody's ever asked me. Oh, wow. And so I think that that's my advice mm -hmm. is raise your hand. Be your own advocate. Be first. your own advocate. Yeah. yeah. And then other people will advocate yeah. for you. That's because there's lots yeah. of opportunity. There's that lots of opportunity out there. Yeah. I've experienced that as well. If you're willing to be your own advocate, you would be shocked at who's right behind you. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. So I want to spend a few minutes talking, kind of looking forward and talking about what's to come. In your eyes, how are brokerages better supporting women in their advancement? I don't know if they're better supporting them, but I think since um, what I'm seeing is since George Floyd, I think that companies are becoming much more aware of who they are and where they're going. Um, we've worked really hard um, in the last year on our DEI efforts. We've just laid out our pillars and that kind of thing for our company. And I think that it, it, it's, it's all people. It's, it's making sure that all people feel included mm -hmm. and have opportunity in, in, in our industry, in our company, in home ownership. I think, it's, I think all of those pieces are really important. I think so too. It's, it's great too that this industry is already a people first industry, right? Yes. And so as a people first industry, making that shift to understanding how you as a business have an impact on people and being not only aware of that, but right. proactive, right. right, is really powerful. We not only have an impact, we also can set a path. We can mm -hmm. set the path. Interesting, yeah. You can almost define the future, right? Yeah, that's incredible. I really wish that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything specific you all are doing in those efforts? Um, oh, there's a lot that we're doing right now. Um, and it's, 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 it's work, mm -hmm. um, but it's also been very rewarding. Um, for instance, we just finished a college internship program at our company. We had eight students from the University of Washington that um, come from they come from the School of Built Environs, which is real estate, uh, architecture, mm -hmm. urban planning, that kind of thing. Um, and they all had backgrounds of instability in housing. Many weren't. Uh, their first person in their family to go to college. Um, they came to work at, they came as an intern at Windermere and learned all aspects about real estate. Wow. And then they presented their projects at the end of their 10 week stint. And every one of them either changed their major or told us that it changed their lives. Wow. So it was, it was really amazing and really fun to be a part of it. That's true local impact. It was really great. So that's that's amazing. Kudos to you. That's incredible. That uh, was you kudos to them. Hey, they were stories. they were yeah. awesome. They wow. were awesome. They wrote, one of their projects was to write how uh, to set up a program about how to get people of color into our industry. Hmm. And so they came up with a whole scholarship, mentorship. It's wow. it's awesome. Solving real problems. Real problems. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. As brokerages make this shift and continue to, right, because this isn't new, even though there's more of a focus on it, as they continue to focus on um, DEI and empowering women, empowering people of color, empowering everybody, what change do you think this will have on our industry? So I think that, I think it is making people aware of the, our past, mm -hmm. of what, what our true history is in this country. And so if we can change the course of that, we can start changing the course of wealth for people of color. We're gonna be in a much better place. We're gonna be in a much better place. Thank you. Any final things you'd like to share? So the role of, of management has really changed over the last 10 years, I'd say. And it used to be that you were deal doctoring. You were helping the agents write their, transa write their transactions and. Um, helping them work through how to do a presentation, making sure that the staff was taken care of, that kind of thing. And it has really changed to be a coaching position. And you have to have a coach's heart. And if you have a coach's heart, you can do very well in management, whether it is in management of any kind of sales position, whether it's in title, mortgage, escrow, real estate sales. There's lots and lots of opportunities, like I've said, 
many times. <laughs> um, but w if you have that mindset, then you can do very well in this business. And I think that that's also the opportunity for women. I think women, a lot of women do have that coaching mindset. Do you see women moving into management more? I see coaching moving. I see people with that kind of yeah. heart moving into that position more. Not necessarily women. It's it's both. It's I, people with that mindset and heart. I think that's really important because we're here today talking about opportunities for advancement and growth. And that looks different for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So you just said it depends on what your heart is and mm -hmm. what drives you and what motivates you. Mm -hmm. And that's really where it all starts. Because when you look at the sea of paths you could take to grow professionally and personally, Pick one that is meaningful to you, Oh, right? absolutely. You, if, you, you, you have to work a lot, exactly, <laughs> it turns out. Yeah. And if that's what drives you, then go the management route, right? Um, if you're financially driven, right, do what makes the most sense for you. Mm -hmm. If you're a natural leader and that's what's fulfilling to you, mm -hmm. look for opportunities maybe at a higher, higher level in your brokerage. Well I think that's something that we often kind of forget is that there are many, many different ways to go. Exactly. And many different definitions of success, right? Exactly. We recently, when we were working with our, the person who's helping us with our DEI efforts, she said, why don't you have more women and people of color in upper management positions? And I'm like, because they're selling real estate and making a lot of money. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and that's what's driving them right now. Yeah. If financial independence or financial freedom is what's important to you now, then that might be your definition Absolutely. of success. Yeah, I'm a huge believer in like, no matter what your goal is, let's knock down the barriers standing between you and your goals. So I think the first step is defining kind of what motivates you personally, and then recognizing what barriers are in your way and navigating that. That's really good. And finding the support system, you've experienced that. Yeah, I know, I feel really lucky. I feel really lucky that I get to be part of this business. I love it. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us thank today. Thank you for having me. It was really fun to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate uh -huh. it. And thank you for everyone listening. We will see you next time.